Before we begin, I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who voted, both on Facebook and on YouTube. You guys are simply amazing. After counting the votes, the image you guys found most interesting is number two, the Eagle Huntress. So let's start with an introduction. Back in 2013, I arrived at West Mongolia. I went there since I was hoping to photograph the Kazakh eagle hunters living in the area. While my original plan was to stay there for a week, I ended up staying for 40 days as I decided to turn my visit into a full-fledged photography project called The Future Generation of Eagle Hunters. This image of 13-year-old Ai Pan that we are going to analyze in this video is actually the final chapter of that photography project. And this is why before we begin, there is something very important I need you to understand. This image wasn't made simply by walking around and stumbling upon this magical scene. This image is a direct result of weeks and weeks of hard work and challenges that were leading up to it. In this video, you will receive an in-depth look into the exact process that made this image possible. So without further ado, let's begin. By the time I was getting closer to photographing the iconic image of the Eagle Huntress, I had already photographed other young Eagle Hunters for the project. Kids like Ilka Bulan, who was still in the early stages of training with his dad, something that was very important to integrate into the story and images. And Bach Birgen, who was the youngest eagle hunter in the province at that time, and in my eyes represented the first hunter of his generation. After that, I knew I had just enough time and budget to find the last successor for the project, and I was hoping to find a new angle for the story. This is how the idea to find an eagle huntress came about. Well, at least that was the idea. First of all, you need to understand that Mongolia is a big country, meaning that we have to drive for hours from one eagle hunter's house to the next. Not to mention that there are no roads, the terrain is very difficult, and on top of that, Mongolia is one of the least populated countries in the world. So as you can understand by now, finding the eagle huntress wasn't an easy thing to do as it took a lot of time and gasoline. But the biggest challenge we faced was that everywhere we went to and asked about an eagle huntress, the answer was almost exclusively which means no in Kazakh. And just as I was starting to think that the idea of finding an eagle huntress was a lost cause, it was my guide who came to the rescue. When working on photography projects, it's extremely important to make sure that everyone around you is involved. This is because you can never tell who will be the one to give you the information or help you really need. In this particular case of the eagle huntress, it was my guide who put us on the right direction. He introduced me to one of his closest friends, who on top of being a famous eagle hunter, also happened to be Ai Shilpan's father. Later that night, we sat down together and I told them about the project I was working on. Luckily for me, they agreed to be a part of the project and I was invited to join an eagle hunting training session the next day. And now we move to the next part of this video, which is photographing the images. The next day, we climbed up a mountain range not too far from their home. Once the training began, I started snapping images, exploring the scene with my camera. At that point in time, I already had these predetermined dispositions about what kind of elements I wanted to integrate into my images. I wanted to have the Altai mountains in the background, as these mountains are the hunting grounds in which this culture exists. I also wanted to have snow in my images, to symbolize the hunting season, which roughly stretched from November to late March. The last element I wanted to have was loneliness. I wanted to show just how isolated the hunters were during those hunts. In order to convey these elements into my images, I made two very important technical decisions. The first one was using a telephoto lens in order to pull up the far mountains from the background and give them more dominance in the frame. The second thing was using closed apertures as I wanted the images to have a high depth of field and allow the viewers to see more of the hunter's environment and surroundings. Looking at those images now, I quite like them. You can see how Aishalpan's father is teaching her how to hold the eagle. Both of them are pretty small in the frame, giving that loneliness feeling I was talking about before, while giving the mountains in the background more dominance in the image. But it wasn't long before I realized that I had a big problem working in that location. As you can see, almost all of the images are taken from the exact same angle. This is because the location was so steep, I couldn't move around. During a short break, I pointed out to Aishalpan's father my frustrations about not being able to move around and that I felt like I was missing some really good images. To which he simply replied, why don't we move to a different location? I came to learn that any location in the mountains could suffice as long as it served the eagle hunting training requirements. A few moments later, we squeezed into our car and started looking for a better location. It was almost the sunset by the time we found it. 
So as soon as we got to the new location, I started photographing. First, I made a few portraits. I wanted to get Aishalpan used to being photographed and feel more relaxed with the situation. I was quite surprised to see how comfortable she was holding the eagle, especially when considering that she had the least amount of experience in comparison to the other hunters I photographed before. Another thing that stood out was her smile. Whenever she was left alone with the eagle, she was glowing. From that moment, I knew that the best image I could make that day would be an image that combines both her childish smile and her natural ease with the eagle. My chance to do that came about when Aishalpan and her father practiced sending the eagle away. As you can see in the image, this is happening while Aishalpan is sitting on a rock as if she is riding a horse, while her dad is standing in a lower point in the mountain, calling the eagle to him. I built my composition around Aishalpan as I wanted her to be alone in the frame, and I left an empty space on the left hand side for the eagle to fly through it. From there all I had to do was wait, squeezing the shutter button on my camera every time the eagle took off. This technique of building a composition around your subject and simply waiting for something to happen is very useful when trying to make sure you don't miss out the decisive moment. Since the sunset was almost over, I just snapped images like crazy, praying to whoever was listening that I'll get the shot I was hoping for, and right in the nick of time, I got it. A moment where Aishalpan had this beautiful smile and her eagle was flying away, spreading its wings in the Altai Mountains. We have now covered all of the elements that made this image possible and how it was made. Now we move on to the last part of this video, the post-processing, a phase that every image has to go through before being sent to publications. First, let's talk about sorting out the images. I follow a three-step system that I think works best in order to find the images I'm after. The first step is pretty straightforward. I go over the entire image folder, spending about two seconds on each image. Whenever I see something that gets my attention, I put a mark on it using Lightroom's ranking system. This helps me to make sure that the images I'll be working with are engaging with the viewer at first sight. Then I go to the second stage where I remove the images who have technical problems, images who are slightly out of focus, or images that are over or underexposed in a way that I can't fix in post-processing. That usually leaves me with about 100 to 150 images, which I think is a reasonable amount to actually examine one by one. Then begins the last stage, which I think is the most important one. I go over the remaining images and ask myself only one question. Does this image serve the story? For example, the main reason I chose our image was because it represented almost every aspect I wanted to show in the story about Aishalpan and eagle hunting. You can see the Altai Mountains in the background. She is alone in the frame, giving that isolation feeling I was looking for. And of course, you can see her beautiful smile as the eagle fly away. The only thing I'm missing here in the image is snow. But you can't always get what you want, and in this case, I don't really think it ruins the image. Now when we have selected our image, we can go into Develop section in Lightroom and start editing. First of all, let's go into full screen mode. So what I would like to do now is to share with you some of the global adjustments I did to the image. Personally, I prefer doing edits that affect the image as a whole, since I feel it keeps it more loyal to how it was originally photographed. So what I'm going to do right now is to reset all the changes, and then we will bring them back and address why they were made. So what you're seeing right now on the screen is exactly how the image came out of the camera. Personally, I have two problems with it. First, I feel like the shadows are a bit too dark, and second, I feel like the image is a bit undersaturated. Definitely not how I remember that scene. So the first thing I'm going to do is to play a little bit with the shadows and highlights right here. First, I'm going to brighten up my shadows so I can see more of Aishalpan's clothing and some details in the eagle and the rock she's sitting on. I think something like that would be okay. I will also open some of the blacks here since Aishalpan's clothing is mostly black by itself. Now I'm going to bring as much as I can from the sky. I'm going to do that by darkening the highlight section here all the way down. Now I have a pretty even image. I can see a lot of information in the shadows and the sky feels a lot more colorful. But as you can see, I barely have any contrast in the image. So I'm going to add some contrast right here. I think about 20, 21 should be enough. The last thing I'm going to do is add clarity. I like this option a lot because it gives a lot of contrast to the image with almost no effect on the dynamic range. But as you can see right now, whenever I add clarity, it kind of dims down the colors from the image. So whenever I add clarity, I also add the same amount of vibrance in order to balance it out. 
So yeah, that's pretty much all the post-processing this image went through. I really like how it looks right now. The colors are better. I can see a lot more details in the shadows. And this is exactly how I would put it on the website or how I would have sent it to publications. So yeah, that concludes our video. We talked about everything from the original idea, the photo shoot, and the post-processing the image went through. And this is exactly how it was sent to publications. I just want to say thank you again for everyone who voted and been a part of making this video happen. You guys are awesome. If you have any other question regarding this image, feel free to write me or leave a comment on the video below. And that's the end of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in about a week.